Hey everyone, Jason here from Learn, Build, Repeat. In today's video, we're building a floating tile rack out of a single maple board. But let me tell you, things don't go exactly as planned. Let's get to it. So while you guys are watching me break down this board, I just want to share that I am not a professional woodworker. I'm just a guy in a shop who does this part-time on the weekends. I'm actually a software engineer by trade and I just do this for fun. I mostly spend my days coding software, which is not tangible, not physical in any way. So about a year ago, I started getting into woodworking. I first bought this horrible, rigid job site saw that I was using for, you know, some basic woodworking. And I quickly realized that it was just terrible. I had to upgrade. I just kept spending more money and buying more tools and lumber until I started actually being able to make half decent things. Still not great, and you'll see some of the scripts in this video of some cuts I do that are completely wrong that I try and salvage. But I just want to share with you my inspiration for this build. I chose to build this floating tile rack for three main reasons. One, it's a simple project I can build in a weekend. This is really important because I work a full-time job and it's hard to find time otherwise. Two, it's a simple project in case you guys want to build it. You don't need a lot of fancy tools. You mostly just need a table saw, which is pretty common in a lot of shops. And the third main reason is my wife's got a lot of towels. I need to put them somewhere. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about what we're actually gonna do here. I picked up this maple board from Fine Lumber here in Austin, and they have all this, and they have a incredible selection of all these different hardwoods, softwoods. And so I got this maple board, I think it was like 50 bucks. As you can see, my desk collection in this shop is not great. And when you're milling lumber, oh my God, you produce so much sawdust. And here, it just completely clogs up. I'm actually moving into a new shop in about seven months, thereabouts. And I'm gonna be definitely investing in actual dust collection. So theoretically, the jointer should have gotten everything flat on one side so that I can then turn around and run it through the planer to get it down to make it flat on the other side so that I at least have, at this point, three sides that are completely square to one another. Spoiler alert, this didn't happen. I am not great at doing this. Next step on this tile rack build is I need to rip this maple board. I need to get two boards 40 inches long by about one and an eighth inch in width and height. Okay, this board just keeps moving every time I try and cut it. Like, look at all that, like, look at all that tension that was built up in the board. Like, I haven't even cut all the way through because it was starting to bind, but look. How the hell am I supposed to work with that? All right, there is quite a bit right there. See that? Lots of bowling. That was flat before. Not good. So if I hold like these two ends together, look at that gap. That's how much it bowed by. Wow. That's from the same board. <sighs> so let me cut a few more and see if I can't get a straight one. Okay, yeah, I'm hoping you guys can see this. I cut these four boards all from the same board. I ripped down some hard maple to get to this. You can clearly see that this one right here, this guy, the second one in, is bowed way, way up for some re weird reason. The other two, this, the one right next to it seems the second worst, and then the two end pieces seem to be the best. So, these two seem to be the straightest. With a little bit of a bow, but I'm making a towel rack, so a little bit of bow should be okay. It's not fine furniture. So I'm gonna choose these two and we're gonna keep going. I have my two slightly bowed boards now and I need to cross cut them down to the right length. I'm going to need four boards at six inches, two boards at nine inches, and two boards at 24 inches. That's all you need for this floating tile rack and I'm gonna use my cross cut slot to do this. I do have a miner saw that you could also use but mine is horribly inaccurate. It's really cheap, really old, and I need a new one. So I'm gonna use my cross cut slot, which I know is 100% accurate. I'm gonna first cut off one edge with them clamped together and just kind of move the boards along the crosscut slide with a stop to make sure everything is exactly the same length. Now, I wasn't sure how I was gonna attach these. I wanted to maybe use screws or dowels or something like that. So in preparation of a glue up, I decided to remove the burrs on the edges of each of the boards. However, in the end, I decided to go with dados and rabbits, which was a much better choice, but still nice to clean these up. And this is when I first noticed that my boards weren't square. 
and I wanted to make this as precisely as I can, especially being an amateur woodworker. I was kind of using this as practice. There's a lot of joints and I want to use all my milling tools to get it perfectly square and it just wasn't. So I was pretty frustrated at this point. And I debated with myself, like, does it matter? It's just a towel rack. Nobody on the internet will ever know. But in the end, I decided to go back and flatten everything again, running it through the table saw, running it through the planer and jointer one last time to make sure it was perfectly flat and true. So after putting away my Dewalt planer, I grab my data blades because what I'm planning on doing is making a groove on each of the boards so that I can glue them up. I'll show you that as I do it, but here I'm actually starting to mark them out so that I don't screw it up and do the wrong side when I run it through the table saw. I've done that before and I didn't really want to waste this maple because I only had the really warped stuff left if I made a mistake. One of the cuts was I had to make a groove on these long 24 inch pieces. And I had to do this in such a way that the board was sticking straight up from the table saw. So I have this really simple jig that I made to hold the board in place as I move it through the blade. This would be an impossible cut without it, but with it, it was honestly fairly easy. Now I'm cutting the tongue that's gonna to be sticking into those grooves that I previously cut. And so I set my dado blades to the right depth on the table saw and I just run it through using the fence and the miter gauge. I can do this because I'm not going all the way through. This would normally be a very dangerous cut if you were to use both of them and definitely get kicked back. But if you use both and you're not going all the way through, it's safe and this is pretty standard practice. And unfortunately, I made another pretty big mistake here. I took off a little bit too much material because you have to run it through one side and then flip it over and run it through the other side. So small changes to the height of the blade result in a lot of material taken off because it's twice as much. And I took off just a little bit too much material on one of these tongues. And I took off a little bit too much material on one of these tongues. I'll come back to this later when I try and fix it. But for now, I was a little bit disappointed, but I just kept going on because I really wanted to get this done. So all the pieces are cut now, everything should be ready for the final assembly, but I do sand down all the pieces one last time to make sure it's completely flat and there's no burrs in there. Now it's time for a dry fit. So here you see me assembling everything, all the tongue and groove. It's a little bit loose because I cut off a little bit too much material on the table saw, but my solution to that is when doing the glue up, but my solution to that is I'm gonna take some of the sawdust that I created from doing all these cuts, mix it with a bunch of glue so it gets really thick and heavy and kind of use this as a filling agent to kind of fill in some of the gaps in between the groove and tongue. There's not that many, but I just want to make sure I get this as clean as possible. A really handy way to mix these things together is just take like a popsicle or like some wooden stick, shove it in the end of your drill, and it honestly mixes pretty well. I do use a hand mixer to get some of this stuff on the edge, but if you're doing this, it's a kind of a little shop hack. You can do this for epoxy too. And then honestly, I just kind of slather the joints and press everything together. I come back a little bit later on in this glue up to fill in a little bit more of the gaps on the surface level because essentially glue and sawdust is just wood filler and it'll match pretty closely because I use the same sawdust as from the wood. One thing to worry about when you're doing this kind of glue up where I have tons of extra material is it's easy to remove the material on the outside of these joints with like a sander or running through a table saw, which is exactly what I do later on. But for the glue that's inside the 90 degree bend, it's impossible to get that out. So you're gonna wanna get that out as much as possible while it's still wet. And so you can wipe it down with a rag, a paper towel. But another hack is just to use a straw. It, like use the end of a straw and just kind of like squeegee it through and it will pick up all that glue or at least 99% of it so that you don't have to come back and spend, I don't know how long sanding those corners manually. 
And if you're still watching my video at this point, then you probably like this content. So please leave a like and subscribe to get notified in the future. After letting it sit a day, everything's glued up. You can see those edges look pretty terrible, but that should be easy to remove. The most important thing now is that it's strong and very stable. So while I didn't do a quite that great of a job with this glue up and use way too much glue, it honestly was very easy to remove in the end. This, I gotta be honest, isn't quite square. I wasn't able to get it perfectly square, which is kind of why I was able to run all the corners through the table saw at a slight angle just to taper away the cut, leaving a very smooth finish. And that way I was able to make these really clean lines and get rid of all this extra glue that I used. And of course, at the end, you gotta sand. Sanding is absolutely essential. It's gonna finish your project out so well. And I have this amazing festival sander that I use for pretty much everything. So it was pretty smooth at the end. And now it's time for the final step, which is finishing. This is a step that's absolutely essential if you're gonna be putting furniture in your house, especially in your bathroom where this is gonna go. Some people love it, some people hate it. I like it on some days, hate it on other days. Today, I'm gonna be finishing this maple with a general finishes, satin, high performance polyurethane. It's my go-to finish that looks great. It honestly doesn't really change the look of the wood. It doesn't amber it or anything like that. It's water-based, so it just goes on, dries really quickly, and then you can apply second coats. This thing is actually pretty tricky to finish. There's lots of corners, there's lots of edges, and this water-based polyurethane has a tendency to drip, so you gotta be very careful as you're finishing this out. And then between coats, I sanded with a 220 grit paper to just to knock down all the little bumps that will, that will rise up. This resulted in a really smooth finish in the end. With that, everything's done and it's just time to mount on the wall. I use this Craig stud finder. It's honestly just a magnet that will find the screws in the wall wherever they attach the drywall to the stud to find the stud. It's very handy. It works way better than any of the electrical ones. So I used this to find a stud and it turns out it was in the perfect position in the wall, right next to the actual towel rack that's not floating. So I used my level and I was able to use two three inch screws to really secure it to the wall. And that's it. I just put some of the towels that were laying around the house in this floating towel rack holder. And then I'm sure my wife will absolutely love it when she gets home. She doesn't actually know I'm putting this in, so it's gonna be a surprise for her. And if you got to the end of this video, then leave a comment in the comment section, starting with the word floating, so I know you made it all the way to the end. Let me know what you think of this. Is this a project that you'd like to take on or just complete trash? Let me know.